welcome to Cine Monica. I love Wes Anderson. Oops, that was dusty. I love Wes Anderson a lot. I would say his movies are a huge inspiration to me, and I became very interested in filmmaking because of them when I was a teenager. So I'm not here to bash any Wes Anderson movie. Of course, I will be honest if I don't like a movie or if I don't like something about a movie, but this is not going to be one of those all of his movies look the same. They're all style and no substance, because I do not think that. I know Wes Anderson, for some reason, is trending a lot right now on the internet, so I thought this would be a great idea to just rank all of his movies. I've always wanted to do this. By the way, guys, I made a little video of the Wes Anderson trend that's going around. If you guys want to go watch it and support me, I'm proud of it. It's on my Instagram and also on my TikTok if you prefer that. Thanks! Okay, so these are going to be my categories. First of all, we have Elite. This is where the Elite movies are going to be. I mean, of course, the ones that I think are masterpieces that are absolutely perfect and that I love with all my heart. <laughs> then it's gonna be pretty great. These are movies that I still think are, like it says, pretty great, but they're not masterpiece level per se, but they're still amazing movies. Then we have good. These are good movies, not necessarily amazing, not bad movies, entertaining movies. And lastly, we have meh which are movies I don't really care for. They're just meh, meh, some people might like them. I'm not saying they're bad movies, but they're just not on my radar. Let's start the ranking with The Royal Tenenbaums. Okay, so Wes Anderson movies, they are not just pretty, they are also very depressing. I like Wes Anderson movies because they explore these things while also having this incredibly crisp and perfect aesthetic, and it's just a great combination. Sad movies don't have to be gray and gloomy and dark. They could be fun and colorful and pink. And of course, The Royal Tenenbaums is the epitome of a Wes Anderson movie. The Royal Tenenbaums is about this very dysfunctional family, these three siblings, they are very eccentric and they're pretty much geniuses in their own way. They have a lot of quirks to them and they all come under this one roof because of their father. They have been kind of abandoned by him. He is trying to make things right with them. This movie is incredibly <laughs> depressing in a lot of ways. Also, trigger warning, for self-harm, but I think the way that Wes Anderson explores all of these topics while also making his characters so unique, the way that they speak to each other, the way that they dress, all of the characters are very well explored and three-dimensional in my opinion. This is like if Succession was Wes Anderson. <laughs> Put that into an AI, you get the Royal Tenenbaums. I just love how he directs actors a lot. I just think it's an incredibly beautiful story. And not only that, it is hilarious. Like I said before, The Royal Tenenbaums is just a perfect mix of everything. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. There's a couple of other Wes Anderson movies that, that I think even surpass this movie. So I will put it in pretty great for now. Before we continue, I want to talk to you guys about Surfshark VPN, who is the sponsor of this video and something that I use that has saved my life a lot of times. Save my life in the context of I could watch movies and TV shows that I can't normally because of my location. A VPN is a virtual private network, which means you can keep your online identity safe by encrypting all the information between your device and the internet. So this protects all of your data from big companies and cyber criminals. And also with Surfshark VPN, you can change the location of your device. For example, me, I'm in the United States, but I travel a lot to the Dominican Republic to see my family. So whenever I'm there and I was watching a show here in the US, I always change my location back to the US so I can continue watching my show. Or for example, if there's a movie that I want to watch while I'm here in the US and it's not available here, but it's available in Canada, for example, I will change my location to Canada and then I can watch the movie on Netflix or whatever. It has been so helpful. It's just the best. I mean, you can protect your data and also change your location and watch whatever you want. That's perfect. If you guys are still thinking about getting a VPN, don't think just do. It's great, especially if you consume so much content like I do all the time. You can now get three months free of Surfshark VPN with the code Cinemonica. I'm gonna leave it in the description so you guys can check it out. Thank you Surfshark. Again, the link is in the description. Let's go back to the ranking. Next is Rushmore. Rushmore is about this kid who falls in love with his new teacher and he tries to come up with ways in which he can woo her. He can catch her attention and make her fall in love with him. Rushmore is a pretty fun movie. It's it's like Ferris Bueller meets um, Wes Anderson, I don't know. It's a high school movie, it's pretty fun to watch. I would say there's some dull moments here and there. There's some moments that are a little bit boring to me. It's still pretty fun. I would say it's more of like a comfort watch. In terms of the Wes Anderson style that we know now, this movie is definitely in its early stages. It's also a more simple story than his other more recent films. I still think it's a good movie. It just doesn't speak to me in the same way as his other films do. But for that, I'm gonna put it in good. 
Moving on to the life aquatic. Some of you guys are gonna hate me for this. It's about an oceanographer who wants to avenge a member of his crew because of a shark who ate him. So he embarks on this underwater journey along with a few characters from his past. I think this movie is one of the most boring Wes Anderson movies. Incredible cinematography, incredible color scheme, the stop motion is so good. On a technical level, I think this film is incredible in terms of story, in terms of dialogue. I just don't think that the story flowed very well. I felt like there was something missing from the story um, and from the characters. I don't think that they were all that well developed and for that reason I feel like it was harder to connect with these characters and this really pains me. This pains me but I will have to put it in meh. I'm really sorry for all of you Life Aquatic fans, please don't hate me. This is just my opinion, it doesn't mean it's the right opinion. By the way guys, I was at the thrift store the other day and I saw a sculpture of Bill Murray's head as his character in the Life Aquatic and I almost took it, but I didn't and now I'm regretting it. I could just have like Bill Murray's head right here on my shelf and now it's gone forever. Alright, moving on to the Grand Budapest Hotel. I mean she's that Cost. i'm sorry the grand budapest hotel is about this concierge and his lobby boy one of the guests of the hotel suddenly dies and gustav the concierge becomes the owner of this very famous painting and a suspect for her murder the painting is worth a fortune and now they are both running away from people who want to steal it i think the grand budapest hotel is probably one of the most wes andersonian films of wes anderson it's what people picture in their minds when you mention wes anderson the fact that a lot of the shots were made with stop motion with this replica of the hotel is pretty impressive and pretty cool in my opinion this movie has everything that you think a Wes Anderson movie has the beautiful and totally aesthetic color palette quirky characters with the deadpan humor incredibly symmetrical shots stop motion animation hilarious dialogue i mean gustav is one of the funniest characters i think in any of his movies but this movie also has an incredibly fun and entertaining story. It's just a really incredibly well-crafted film. To be honest, it's my favorite Wes Anderson movie. I believe that the Grand Budapest Hotel is a masterpiece. It is going into elite. There was no way that this was gonna go anywhere else. It's just perfect. It's a perfect Wes Anderson movie. Moving on to Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's about this fox, he has a family and everything, but he's just bored with his life, so he plans this heist against these local farmers. The farmers, of course, don't like this at all and they seek revenge against him and his family. Let's preface this by saying how much I love stop motion animation. I love animation in general and Fantastic Mr. Fox is just brilliant. The animation itself, the character designs, the color of this world, it's just so, it's just so vibrant and beautiful. Now the dialogue. The dialogue in this movie is probably one of the most quick-witted, funniest dialogue in any of Wes Anderson films. Like I said, even though there's funny lines and things like that in Wes Anderson movies, there's also, you know, a really underlying, I don't want to say depressing problem, usually about family, dysfunctional families and and you know, Fantastic Mr. Fox has it all. I feel like this movie has a lot of heart. It's honestly a perfect film. I wish he would do more stop motion. Of course, he did Isle of Dogs, which I will talk about later. I'm definitely gonna put it in Elite. I feel like a lot of people would agree as well. It's just a universally well-liked movie, I think. I mean, I don't know, actually. I, I would hope so, because it's great. Since I mentioned Isle of Dogs, let's talk about it. Isle of Dogs is about this kind of futuristic world in which there's this canine flu going around. All of the dogs are banished into this other island where everything is trash and it's ugly and it's no place to live, basically. A boy arrives at this island and looks for his dog and they, along with some other dogs, embark on this epic journey. This movie is, again, incredibly well made. Stop motion animation, which is absolutely beautiful. With that said, I do think that the story wasn't as entertaining as Fantastic Mr. Fox, for example, which is his other stop motion. <laughs> I don't think it had enough heart. I feel like it was very surface level. It's not a bad movie in the slightest. The dogs are pretty funny. <laughs> Isle of Dogs just had too many elements going on there. The story just lacked, I think. It just lacked that emotion, lacked that heart. I do think it's a good movie though. I'm gonna put it in good. Perfectly fine movie, it's just not my favorite. 
Moving on to Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom is about these two kids who are definitely outcasts in terms of their family life, their friends, but they somehow find each other and they start writing letters to each other and then they decide to escape together, leave their lives behind and, you know, start a new life. <laughs> I was completely obsessed with this movie when I was a teenager. I just loved the aesthetics of it. I loved the sense of, you know, this outcast kids who found each other and then they embark on this journey, go on this adventure together of just escaping these kids have had it really hard in life but they find each other and they feel safe with each other i must say though that this movie is a lot stronger for the first half the second half of the film is way weaker and even as a teenager i could feel it i would always lose a little bit of interest by the end which is a bummer so i don't think that this movie is perfect but it's definitely a movie that holds a very special place in my heart and i do think it's amazing i do think it's great i love how the characters were explored i love the like i said the sense of adventure i will put it in pretty great. I don't think it deserves elite status, but it's definitely better than good in my opinion. So pretty great it is. Moving on to the Darjeeling Limited. It's about three brothers have been distanced from each other, but they go on this trip on a train across India in hopes of bonding with each other and become close like they used to be. Again, Wes Anderson with the family drama. In this case, siblings trying to get along. Wes, is everything good at home? This movie really excels at not only trying to bring these siblings together and trying to mend their relationship with each other, but also with themselves. I think all of them go through this self-discovery throughout the movie, which is just beautiful to see and it's beautifully explored and I really love it. I also think it's really funny. Everyone in this movie has baggage and they have to deal with it themselves. They also have to learn how to accept each other's baggage and it's just very human. I'm leaning more towards pretty great because good feels like not enough of praise. This movie is not perfect but it's definitely entertaining and it's fun and it's heartfelt and it's deep so I will put it in pretty great. Moving on to Bottle Rocket, Wes Anderson's very first feature film, which he co-wrote with Owen Wilson. Bottle Rocket is definitely made by baby Wes Anderson. There's a few very tiny hints of how his style is now. It's definitely very faint. He hadn't really developed his style yet, which is totally fine. I mean, it's his directorial debut. There's still some quirkiness to it, there's quirky characters, awkward scenes and fight scenes and kind of like a ridiculous story as well. I must say that this movie was kind of boring to me. I don't think it flowed very well. It just felt very slow and long. It wasn't as entertaining as I wish. Again, I you, you can't really hold it over Wes Anderson's head because it's his first movie ever. That's why kids, you just have to start somewhere and somehow just make the thing that you want to make and you will be getting better. Don't wait for it to be perfect because it won't be. Advice for myself as well. <laughs> Honestly, not my favorite. I don't think it's a really good movie. It's definitely entertaining at times and for someone who is a big fan of Wes Anderson, it's really interesting to see his beginnings but that's pretty much it in my opinion so i will put it in meh yeah don't expect it to be a masterpiece because it won't be all right let's move on to his very last feature film that he has released and it's the french dispatch the french dispatch is about this publication and it's a very interesting movie because it's told in three different stories that are published in this paper the first story about an artist that is sentenced to life in prison. The second story about some students that are rioting. And the third story about a kidnapping featuring a chef. Oh my god, I just noticed that my review is the most liked review on Letterboxd about this movie. And it's just one line. But anyways, I said, he was Anderson too close to the sun. And I stand by that. This movie definitely felt like the stereotypical Wes Anderson style. If you think of symmetry, if you think of quirkiness of deadpan jokes but they were all told in these little micro stories that didn't really have time to develop so in this case i truly think that he went more with style over substance which sucks to say because honestly i'm the number one defender of Wes Anderson when people say that he's just all style usually i would say that's not true but for the French Dispatch, I think that he really focused a lot on, you know, the aesthetics of everything. But I don't think the stories were well developed. I was a little bit disappointed with this movie. It was still pretty fun to watch, don't get me wrong. And the music was incredible. I think I'm gonna put it in good because I don't think it's meant. I think I did get some things out of it. 
So good it is. <laughs> all right, those were all of Wes Anderson's feature films ranked. As you can see, I didn't rank his short films. If you have any opinions on his short films, let me know in the comments and of course about any of his movies and my ranking. Let me know your own ranking as well. Don't forget to check out Surfshark for three months free of a VPN. I mean, you can watch so many Wes Anderson films and other things with a VPN. It's really, really helpful, especially if you're traveling. So yeah, like I said, I'm going to leave the link in the description. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.